So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm trying still to sing this in to be honest because this is the first ever Land Rover on my channel and the first ever Land Rover I'm gonna drive in my life. And what a special one to do it. So what I have here is a 2018 Land Rover Discovery SE V6 diesel. So this is actually a middle trim variant of the Discovery at its time because of course we get the new versions already. But still, this exact one is for sale. So the retail of this is 4.5 million pesos with 27,000 kilometers on it. So not bad price for a what luxury SUV. So I love the all blacked out look. So this is actually the spec if I wanted a Land Rover but being honest I would get a Velar because that for me is the sexiest Land Rover you can get I know others will say go for the Range Rover because it's the big daddy I understand that but I'll go for the Velar but let's talk about this Discovery and this is actually the most popular nameplate of Land Rover at the moment but I understand why we'll get to that later on when we talk about in the interior so being a 2018 model so you have a different face now it's a little bit flat but I don't mind the looks of this whatsoever and you have fake vents here and the stock ground clearance of this is 220 millimeters you can raise it up and lower it down i'll demo that later on so as well you have a discovery badge here and a land rover badge over here they are really big and as you can hear the engine is on not bad for a v6 diesel so i actually like this generation of discovery it looks rugged but there's nice swoopy lines over here and it kind of gives it like a white body look and there's also a discovery embossment here and there are two continuous character lines here one that stretches all the way from the hood to the door and starting from the discovery badge all the way to the rear and the side profile itself so as you can see where i'm standing it is pretty large too you have led lights all around led side repeaters and going back to the side profile itself i really love this blacked out look along with the wheels and by the way, these have different sets of tires for the front, so you get continental off-roading tires at front and Goodyear road tires at the rear. So here now at the rear of the Land Rover Discovery, it's pretty tall. <laughs> and this is probably my favorite part of this Discovery. I mean, so curvaceous, so swoopy like what I said in front. I will call it sexy for a full-size SUV, mid-size SUV. And as well, these are the longest LED taillights I've seen so far in a car. You have reflectors here. And as you can tell, this one's a local unit because these are not amber reflectors. And again, you have a big discovery badge over here. And underneath, I find this a little bit weird lang just for me. The tailgate button is not smack here in the middle. It's just slightly off-center. And then they have a reverse camera here with a washer nozzle and a Land Rover badge. I'm still trying to sync it in, to be honest. You have as well parking sensors all around. So being a 2018 Land Rover Discovery, you don't have a 360 degree camera, but at least you have parking sensors all around. But at least the reverse camera quality is really good. Although, as you can see from this footage, you have to wipe that every so often too. As well, there's a wiper over here, your third brake light, and what else? So, open this boot up. Electronic tailgate still. It is a huge piece. Look at that. And then you have a tonneau cover here for the tailgate itself and then you can store the tonneau here there's a place here where you can store it so it doesn't occupy too much of the boot space so as you can see being a seven seater there's not much space with all of the seats up but again this is not too bad so with all of the seats up here you have a total of 258 liters and i don't think our local spec doesn't get an extra storage shelf here where you can sit down but hey I you can see you can still sit down here i do miss the split tailgate though and here being the middle variant there are no buttons here for folding down the third row you have a 12 volt socket here led light and what i really like first time i've encountered this too you have air suspension so as you can see this is its highest setting i assume no sorry this is its lowest setting so getting stuff in and out won't be an issue but if you want to raise it up So this is its maximum ground clearance now. So, oh, oh god, that's really high. So it won't be as high as a Land Rover Defender, but close enough. So as you can see, it's really high. I can't even sit down normally now. But then again, there's that use of the buttons going up and down. That's so sick. Will take a while, but 
at least there is. So, as well being a middle trim, unlike the HSE variant, there are no, what I said earlier, there are no buttons here on the side to fold down the third row. So, you have to fold this one manually. So, fold this one first, the headrest, and then pull this. I don't actually mind the manual system because the electronic ones are a little bit slow to move. So with the third row finally down, you have a completely flat floor now. So with the third row down, you have a total of 1,137 liters. And with all of the seats down, you have a whopping 2,406 liters. So that's pretty on much on par with its competition like the BMW X7 and a Volvo XC90. Disclaimer. I will compare this to a Volvo XC60 and a BMW X5 because those are the only competitors I've driven so far. And the X5 knowing has the same engine with the X7 so I cannot wait to dive this. So before we go in the interior, let's talk about the biggest talking point of this Land Rover Discovery is the V6 diesel engine. Right. So, you heard that beautiful V6 diesel, surprisingly. And how to open this? It's not your usual slide to the right or to the left. You actually have to push this, and then you are revealed with the 3 liter turbocharged V6 engine. And I love there are grass stats on it. So this engine alone produces 306 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. So as well, it is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Then 0 to 100 kilometers per hour is done in 7.4 seconds. So in, first thing I immediately noticed with this engine, this one gets warm really fast. So I understand some people now who just simply start it and just drive away. And so I don't see any turbochargers here at all. So they're actually stored underneath the engine itself. That could be a little bit of a nightmare issue if and only something goes wrong with the turbocharger engine. So you have to lift this entire thing up or even remove the engine itself. I mean, I don't know. I have no experience with Land Rovers. So that's about it with the exterior, the boot, and the engine of this Land Rover Discovery SE V6. I'll show you the interior. So this is the interior of the Land Rover Discovery. I'll end it there. <laughs> Kidding aside. So, this is what a Land Rover Discovery feels like in the interior. Wow. And as well, when I was being revved with oil in the back, just kidding, it's just dusty. I noticed the engine does not shudder comparing to a what? I'm going to say the BMW X5 is really smooth, but I find this a tad smoother. It's not even moving. There, it's barely shaking whatsoever. That is really, really cool. So, first thing you are greeted here in the interior is this massive string wheel. And I love it's not yet the gloss black touch sensitive buttons, but more or less the same like with the current ones too. So on the left side, you have your navigation and phone connectivity buttons. And then you have your adaptive cruise control buttons on the right side. And I know this is an adaptive cruise control because there are sensors here right above the windscreen and the mirror stock. And as well, surprisingly, for this Land Rover, there are paddle shifters. They're plastic, but hey, at least there is. And I just realized now, this is the first time as well I touched the steering wheel. This is one of the softest and best steering wheels I've ever held. Like, this is so soft. Oh my god. It's like comparing that I'm touching a girl's hand for the first time. That's, that's how... Um, I'm speechless. That's how amazing this steering wheel feels. And unlike some car brands, in the middle of the steering wheel itself, instead of your usual brand name, this one is the model name, the Discovery. And then in the instrument cluster, you have an analog speedometer, analog tachometer with a digital display right there in the middle. I don't even know how to use it. Is it this one? Oh! So correction above your phone controls is actually the controls for the digital display there in the middle. I will leave it in the fuel economy. 
wherever that is air we'll get back to that later so being as well a 2018 model this has an infotainment screen but albeit without apple carplay and android auto but surprisingly the navigation is pretty accurate and is really responsive too like i mean it's not really smooth comparing like the sakes of bmw but it's close enough and then yet again going back the reverse camera is really excellent and i know some models like for example in uk you have to pay an extra to avail a reverse camera knowing this is a really long car and a very wide car you will definitely need that so thank god the local spec units come with reverse cameras as standard not much to play there with the infotainment system of course you can do your off-road information and then lock low traction control launch feature there but of course we're just here in Pasong Tamo we're not gonna off-road this whatsoever I mean I wish I can do anyway so here now in the door I love this thing with Land Rovers the window switches are above here and then as well you have your Meridian sound system this is the best speakers I've ever heard I will not be able to play music for obvious reasons but better than the Harman Kardon system of BMW so below the speakers I love your door handles integrated with the door itself and then you have your lock buttons here and then you have cubby spaces and bottle holders on each side fits my big water jug perfectly and then the left side of the dashboard you have your air conditioning vent your electronic tailgate button I thought this was a headlight lever adjustment this button is actually the brightness for the infotainment system okay that's oddly placed I was expecting to be here in the center console itself and underneath there's an extra coin storage here and then I found out earlier that's why I was having a hard time opening the hood because you cannot open it while the door is closed you have to open the door to access the hood itself and then below the infotainment system itself you have your air conditioning controls they're all plastic but I don't mind it it's all physical buttons and knobs and the aircon of this is pretty cold I mean I'm just at level 2 fan it got cold really really fast in here and then below the controls you have a cubby space and a 12 volt socket fix my phone perfectly i noticed immediately comparing with uk spec models there's no <laughs> and i noticed with uk spec models on the side of the console box there's no extra storages it's just blank and then i love the rise up and down of this gear lever it's a knob as well i have to get a little bit used to that because i was doing that earlier and then i love the aluminum trims here you have your driving modes here so you have grass gravel mud rats sand rock crawl mode oh special programs off so i don't think there's a sport mode button here whatsoever low range i'll keep that off heel descent control electronic stability control button i was expecting that on the left side so it's actually here and then you have your air suspension buttons i will put that as low as possible later for obvious reasons and then you have your very nice electronic parking brake here too down below and then on the right side you have a cubby space here two cup holders with rubber grips fits my water jug perfectly and then there's a space there for a phone fits it perfectly too and then glove box okay it's short but it is really wide and i love the dashboard too there's white cream leather here along with your start stop button i'm not a fan of that because it's too small i was expecting it to be metal too but it's fine and then above the dashboard still squeegee material here and then above here black ceiling oh okay just notice now so comparing with the hsc top of the line front there is no sunroof there for the third row and then flanking the center console box itself your armrest here console box itself it is wide open it up you have two usb ports 12 volt socket and a plastic tray here and then further down below fits this land rover manual it is pretty deep too. there's no cooling fixture for this specific discovery se2 i think that only goes for the hse variant oh yeah the seats are cream too and they're very soft very comfortable probably the one of the best seats i've ever sat into surprisingly there's bolstering <laughs> we'll get to that in a bit too and then above here you have your sunglasses holder led lights safety reminders just in front of the mirror and then visor you have a vanity light with three halogen lights or led no, sorry led lights they're, oh it's a long piece though but sadly they don't extend but it's fine I mean, that feels so nice to the touch so that's about it here in front of the Land Rover Discovery show you the second row 
so this is the second row of the Land Rover Discovery tank like build so this is as well why Discoveries were popular too in the first place because of its practicality look at this feet room knee room and headroom excellent throughout even more spacious than like what I said with the BMW X5 and the Volvo XC60 hopefully I can get reviews too with the X7 new X7 and then XC90 soon too so here in the center you have two cup holders here with rubber grips around them too my water jug doesn't go all the way in but it holds it in place so I give that a pass and above too you have LED lights and then surprisingly behind both front seats you have two map pockets and then there's as well LED light for your feet comparing with like again BMW and then in the center itself you have a weird cubby space here no idea what you'll put there further down below you have two 5 volt sockets and then there's an extra storage there in between then if I sit here in the middle surprisingly no transmission tunnel whatsoever put your feet wherever you want and then sitting here in the middle is as good as the left and right side of the seats I think you can fit a fourth or fifth person for short trips because that's how wide this discovery is so same layout in front your window switch is above here along with your meridian sound system yet again my favorite part the door handle is integrated in the door itself and then you have smaller cubby spaces and bottle holders on each side now and there's halogen lights underneath I just saw it surprisingly my water jug still fits there and then I love this black headlining here and then there's a hump here so it gives it a little bit better headroom and actually the space for your sunroof that only goes for the HSE model by the way isofix anchor points they're not covered in plastic and you thought we were done let's go to the third row here now in the third row of the Land Rover Discovery so far, this is one of the most spacious third rows I've experienced in its class. Well, in terms of the premium luxury bands. So, feet room, knee room is excellent. Even my headroom. Look at that. And unlike the front and second row, there's not much toys here. But there are a lot of quirks still. So, like, you have cubby space here. Along with a 12-volt socket on each side. And I'm not sure if these are cup holders, but... I think it looks like it so my water jug does not fit there anymore and I like you can still see the tie down hooks on each side and they're metal too oh LED lights here too they're pretty bright too so with that it let's go for a drive oh my god so initial wow. pull Okay, I can feel it's a little bit faster than the BMW X5 now and I think it's more or less the same because this is a way heavier car than that of the BMW. Compare this only to an X5, not an X7 yet. And first impressions, yeah, you can tell it's really, really torquey and I gotta say the V6 compared with the stage 6 engine of BMW, this one feels a little bit smoother. And that was just in normal mode. As well, FYI, I forgot. So there's no official drive mode, but it's oh, just sorry, on the gear sorry. lever itself. Then surprisingly, with the mixed tire compounds, like the one I said earlier, Continental off roads at front. Surprisingly, the NVH here is excellent. And not much tire noise too. That's how well insulated these Land Rovers are. And the V6 engine sounds fruity too, surprisingly. Sounds a little bit raspier than the straight 6 of BMWs, but knowing it's a V6, it sounds pretty good too, despite being a diesel engine. Despite on the lowest setting of suspension, socks, bumps, and humps pretty well too, surprisingly. Mm -hmm, I've driven a lot of cars here, crossovers, pickups, you name it. Excellent suspension. I didn't do any driving on video with the Land Rover Discovery when I did off camera, but I wasn't allowed to sh shoot it last minute sadly. But I've driven it. It's crazy. It's no BMW, of course, but that engine is so punchy and torquey. And as well, being a Land Rover. The sting I found the ratio of it is kind of slow, but and there's a lot of body lean too. But surprisingly, not bad for a what almost two and a half ton vehicle. But straight line performance is nuts. Sport mode just transforms the car like crazy. And then 
put it back into drive, it will not activate manual mode, surprisingly. I never knew that about Land Rovers. Although with the mixed set of compounds, like what I said, the fronts, not too bad too, despite the off-road setup at front and then road tires at the end. The NVH there of Land Rovers, that's what good with Land Rovers in the first place. And for what the daily use, to be honest, I think I'll take the Land Rover home over a BMW. I mean, if you just want something comfortable and fast enough, get the Land Rover Discovery and the specific one, remember, it's for sale. But for the BM, if I'm not, like going around in the twisties, going to longer trips, I'll take home my BMW. That's all I have to say. And then this is the biggest surprise for me. Despite almost being two and a half tons, a V6 diesel with that much power and torque, my best fuel economy was 14. 0.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which is 7 kilometers per liter. Not bad at all for what it is. Of course, it won't be as great as the X5's 9 kilometers per liter, so I think more or less the X7 will be the same. But for that Land Rover, that is not bad at all. That concludes my review of this 2018 Land Rover Discovery. You can contact MomGen for further inquiries, and remember that one costs 4.5 million pesos. It's worth a steal. And if not mistaken, there's still two years free servicing and two years warranty left with that Discovery SEV6 diesel. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more future car reviews and hopefully more Land Rover reviews coming right up. Bye-bye.